In this video, you're going to learn how to set up a static directory. So if you have a website with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images, you can go ahead and serve that up without needing to provide a custom route for every single file, which would be a real burden. Now setting this up is really simple, but before we make any updates to server.js, I want to go ahead and create some static assets inside of our project that we can actually serve up. In this case, we're going to make one HTML page that we'll be able to view in the browser. Before we get started, we do need to create a new directory and everything inside of this directory is going to be accessible via the web server. So it's important to not put anything in here that you don't want prying eyes to see. Everything in here should be intended to be viewable by anybody. I'm going to create a public folder to store all of our static assets. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and make an HTML page. I'm going to create a help page for our example project by creating a file called help.html. Now in here, we are going to make a quick basic HTML file, although I'm not going to touch on all of the subtleties of HTML since this is not really an HTML course. Instead, we're going to go ahead and just set up a basic page. So take a quick moment to follow along. The first thing we need to do is create a doc type, which lets the browser know what version of HTML we're using. That's going to look something like this doc type after the opening tag, as well as the exclamation mark here. We just type doc type in uppercase. Then we go ahead and provide the actual doc type for HTML5, the latest version. You just type HTML, then we can use the greater than sign to close things up. Down below, we're going to go ahead and open up our HTML tag so we can define our entire HTML file. Open and close. Inside of HTML, there's two tags we're going to be using, the head tag, which lets us configure our doc, and the body tag, which contains everything we want to render to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and create that head tag first. Inside of head, we're going to provide two pieces of info. First up, we have to set up the char set, which lets the browser know how to render our characters. Here, we're going to go ahead and set meta. And on meta, we're going to set the char set property using equals and inside of quotes, providing the value UTF hyphen eight. Next up, we're going to provide the title tag. The title tag lets the browser know what to render in that title bar where the new tab usually is. In this case, we can set the title to whatever we like. Help page seems appropriate. Help page. Now that our head is configured, we can go ahead and add something to the body of our website. This is the stuff that's actually going to be viewable inside of the viewport right here. I'm going to open and close the body tag and inside of body, I'll provide an H1 title and a P paragraph tag. The title is going to match the title we used up above help page. Perfect. And the paragraph will just have some filler text, some text here. Very cool. Now we have an HTML page and the goal is to be able to serve this page up in our express app without having to manually configure it. We're going to do that using a piece of express middleware. Middleware lets you configure how your express application works. And it's something we'll be using extensively throughout the course. For now, you can think of it kind of like a third party add on. You're saying, Hey, express, you usually work like this. I'd like you to tweak a little bit and work like this. In order to add some middleware, we're going to call app.use. App.use takes the middleware function you want to use. In our case, we're going to be using a built in piece of middleware. So inside of here, we'll be providing the function off of the express object. We will be making our own middleware in this section. So don't worry. I promise it'll become clear exactly what's getting passed into use in a little bit. For now, we're going to pass in express.static and we're going to call it as a function. Now express.static takes the absolute path to the folder you want to serve up. If we want to be able to serve up forward slash help, we're going to need to provide the path to the public folder. This means we need to specify the path from the root of our hard drive, which can be tricky because your projects move around. Luckily, we have that underscore underscore dir name variable. This is the variable that gets passed into our file by that wrapper function we explored. Dir name stores the path to your project's directory. In this case, it stores the path to node web server. All we have to do is concatenate forward slash public to tell it to use this directory for our server. I'm going to concatenate using the plus sign, the string forward slash public. 
With this in place, we are now done. We have our server set up and there's nothing else to do. Now we should be able to restart our server and access forward slash help dot HTML and we should see the page we have right here. Over in the terminal, I can now start the app using nodemon server.js. Once the app is up and running, we can visit it in the browser. I'm going to start by going to localhost 3000. Here we get our JSON data, which is exactly what we expect. And if we change that URL to forward slash help.html, we should get our help page rendering. And that is exactly what we get. Right here, we have our help page showing to the screen. We have the help page title and the sum text here, paragraph down below. Being able to set up a static directory that easily has made Node the go-to choice for simple projects that don't really require a back end. If you want to create a Node app for the sole purpose of serving up a directory, you can do it in about four lines of code, these three here and the line down below. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is this call to app.listen. App.listen does take a second argument. It's optional. It's a function. This will let us do something once the server is up because it can take a little bit of time to get started. In our case, we're going to console.log a message. Server is up on port 3000. Now it's really clear to the person who started the app that the server is actually ready to go because the message is going to print to the screen. If I save server.js and go back into the terminal, you can see right here, server is up on port 3000 prints and back inside of the browser, we can refresh and we get the exact same results. That's it for this one. We now have a static directory where we can include JavaScript, CSS, images, or any other file types we like. In the next video, we're going to continue on learning how to use Express. We're going to take a look at how we can render dynamic templates, kind of like you would with a PHP or Ruby on Rails file. You have some variables and you want to render a template injecting those variables. That's coming up next, so stay tuned. I will see you then.